From the mysteries of the deep to the power of human innovation, the future of our oceans is in our hands. Together, we can protect the oceans that sustain us all. Join me on a journey of discovery, innovation, and change. Let's create a future where our oceans are safe, healthy, and harmonious. This is Harmonious Oceans. Hey everyone, welcome back to Harmonious Oceans, the series where we dive deep into the challenges our oceans face. Today, we're moving on to the fifth letter in our journey, O, and it stands for something you might not think about often. Ocean noise. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can noise be a problem in the ocean? Isn't it all just peaceful waves and whale songs? Well, not quite. Beneath the waves, there's a whole symphony of sounds, and not all of them as soothing as you might imagine. In fact, some of them are downright harmful. So stick around because we're going to uncover the hidden threat lurking under the waves and what we can do to turn down the volume for our marine friends. Okay, imagine this. You're at a concert, but it's not the good kind where you're jamming out. It's the kind where the speakers are blasting so loud you can't even hear your own thoughts. Now, think about how that would feel if it was your everyday life. That's what it's like for marine animals because of ocean noise pollution. Believe it or not, fish and marine animals do have ears and they rely on sound for everything, finding food, navigating, and even chatting with each other. But here's the kicker. Sound travels faster and further in water, which means what might be just a hum to us can be like a jackhammer to them. Ships, sonar devices, and even underwater drilling are turning the ocean into a chaotic mess of noise, and it's throwing the marine life completely out of whack. For instance, beluga whales use sound to communicate with their calves, but noise pollution is making it hard for them to even find each other. It's like their calls are being drowned out by a never-ending car alarm. So, what's the big deal with a little noise? Turns out it's a huge deal. Let's break down why. Imagine if every time you try to escape a loud sound, it actually hurt you. That's what's happening to marine animals. Loud underwater sounds can cause temporary or permanent hearing loss. And for animals that rely on hearing to survive, that's pretty much a death sentence. Some sounds are so intense that they cause whales to panic and surface too quickly, leading to decompression sickness. Yep, yeah, that's the same thing that happens to divers who come up too fast. Noise pollution isn't just an inconvenience, it's changing how marine animals behave. Imagine you're trying to have a conversation in a noisy cafeteria. You might shout, whisper, or just give up. Marine animals are doing the same thing. They might abandon their feeding grounds, alter their migration patterns, or even stop communicating altogether. For example, studies have shown that sonar can make blue whales stop feeding and swim away which is like putting a big closed sign on their favorite restaurant. Picture this, you're trying to call your friend, but there's so much background noise that neither of you can hear a thing. That's what noise pollution does to marine animals. It masks their calls, making it harder for them to communicate. Dolphins, for instance, have been found to simplify their calls in noisy environments, kind of like texting in shorthand. But this isn't just about missed messages. This communication breakdown can affect entire populations, disrupting their social structures and survival. Let's hear from Dr. Nicole Todd, who has been working extensively in monitoring ocean noise and its impact. She has a deep interest in blue economy and coastal and marine systems. She is currently a PhD student working as part of the Marine Ecology Group at Mari. I hope I'm saying that right, which is a world leading research centre for energy, climate and marine in Ireland. Let's hear from her on the challenges and how we can minimise ocean noise, the hidden threat beneath the waves. So starting off, you've been working deeply on underwater ocean noise. Could you please share more about it and what are the main challenges? Yeah, uh, so uh, there's a couple of things. So um, 
I recently finished my PhD, which was monitoring um, a harpoporpus, which is a small uh, cetacean, which is like whales, dolphins, uh, porpoises, a group of um, animals, uh, which are very sensitive to uh, noise disturbance. Um, I monitored them with underwater uh, recording devices to see where they are and what uh, more about their behaviour, such as feeding behaviour. Um, and then also more recently, um, I've been working on a couple of projects which look at guidance for managing um, underwater noise from offshore renewable energy, such as uh, wind farms, and looking at the impact of sound uh, from uh, across marine ecosystems in relation to offshore wind. Um, so a couple of different uh, perspectives there uh, from yeah. my side. Um, and you're talking about wind farms. Um, what do you think are the main impacts and causes of underwater noise from construction activities, wind farms that you've worked on and more? Well, I suppose the kind of as part of the question is what we are trying to figure out on a lot of the projects is it's a bit of a mindset as well. There's a difference between noise and sound. Uh, so the ocean it's a complete picture of sounds, right? So you have the natural sounds from marine life, such as fish, uh, weather, like your waves. And then you have the introduced sound from human activities, such as, you know, the offshore um, wind farms. Yeah. And over the past uh, couple of decades, there's been an increase in developments and activities, which increases the noise levels um, in that environment. And then quite often you get in like all these noise levels build upon each other um, and like add, uh, add in combination and cumulative effects because you get the wind, not only the wind farms, but then there's like shipping lanes, yeah. there's like seismic or military operations and it all kind of adds together. And there's a lot of challenges with trying to monitor those noise levels. Um, and in many cases, trying to understand there's not a there's no baseline in a lot of cases there's no there's nowhere you really can go that has the absent absence of sound yeah. like a quiet complete quiet ocean so it's trying to understand what effect we're having and where we kind of need to be while balancing the kind of financial and like the need in our uh, communities for we need shipping uh, we need wind farms we, like because we're trying to move away like to more move into more green in our energy we we know we need those things but it's we want to protect the environment uh while we're doing it so it's trying to strike that balance is what we do in a lot of um our research you talked about the problem um so moving on to like possible solutions do you think there are current technologies or future technologies that could help monitor noise or help reduce it yeah um i mean it's it is in a kind of a developing area um of research uh like as you're talking about wind farms you're kind of trying to put in noise the them a noise abatement system so it's like things to put in place to kind of stop the noise or reduce the noise such as like bubble curtains or I suppose some ways counterintuitively you might have things like called um deterrent device acoustic deterrent devices so they might introduce noise but they introduce noise to kind of give the animal a head start as such because uh activities construction activities with uh, wind farms pile driving can be very loud very sharp they call it impulsive noise it's like if you're in uh, something like a bang, like an explosion really close to your ear, like that's quite shocking noise. Impulsive noise is quite shocking noise. So if you in, uh, introduce a lower level of noise, it's, yeah, it's a bit of a, a heads up to kind of make the animal move away. And then it's less, going to be less deafened or could even cause um, uh, injury and death and stranding for some species. Uh, so you're trying to introduce mitigation and um, trying to um, be aware of if there's certain times of the year where it's just not as sustainable to do these activities, such as um, if there's a seasonal migration 
uh, there's a lot happening. You can try and readjust when you're doing your activities. Um, for like shipping, you can, if you slow down ships, uh, if you slow down ships, the ships are less uh, noisy, they generate less sound. Uh, so you're kind of trying to reduce that there. And also um, things like marine protected areas. So you've, if you're identifying important areas um, in the marine ecosystem, we can have better regulation there to protect um, species and habitats from high levels of noise in important regions. Yeah, I think it's really important because, um, I mean, the ocean is so important to us and also the animals that live in it. So I think we need to protect all of them. 100%. We're just one, like, we're one species and we're obviously, we have a use in the ocean, but it's taking account of all the other species that want to use the ocean. Like, we don't rule, that we shouldn't rule the seas. So, yeah. Um, and what kind of policy changes do you think are needed at a global scale to protect the ocean? Yeah, I mean, policy um, is it can be quite complex. There's all, uh, quite often a lot of um, policies going on at the same time, which have different goals and different agendas. Yeah. Um, like in uh, in Europe, across European waters, we have like habitats directive, which protects it would designate areas for that's you know when you kind of get into your special areas of conservation your protected areas for species and um, and then you have uh, regulations and policies that introduce noise levels and th certain thresholds that we shouldn't exceed um to kind of keep noise levels low um but i think it's also um important to noise doesn't know borders or boundaries like for countries so having a bit of global cooperation um across the yeah across our oceans um would be quite important um trying to um comply with the regulations we we do have by making sure that when we're assessing environments before we um do construction activities and have developments to just make sure that we're meeting the marks and make sure we're doing it uh, as comprehensive as can, as we can uh, to kind of reduce the impacts on the species and habitats that are there. And yeah, we're kind of, yeah, international um, enforcements as well, because we need to monitor the environment and then if you need to enforce it to kind of, you know, make sure that we're going to move, uh, yeah, things are going to go places. <laughs> And lastly, are there any simple steps that, you know, we all can take to bring awareness to this challenge? Or well, I mean, things, things that we're doing today, like, you know, having the conversations and um, spreading awareness across, like, not just like different types of people talking to each other. So researchers talking to regulators, talking to um developers, governments, public, you know, make sure that you're not in our we all get our own bubbles we all want to educate we all want to learn the different perspectives uh because there's always a lot of everyone has their own side of things like you would talk to the um wind farm developers they have projects they want them to happen the scientists maybe want you know um they're really caring about like maybe a certain species or uh what the species where it is and what it's feeding but it's just kind of education on uh, the impacts of increased noise, sharing yeah. that across like social media and attending events like or like if there's workshops on, if there's webinars, if there's local events. Um, I also think that environmental action, like I grew up by the sea. I love the sea. So I think getting involved in your local communities, even like it sounds maybe sounds silly, but like a beach clean and stuff like introducing that care for the ocean can kind of translate into different areas. And if you make like sustainable choices, you've got that environmental mindset that you just want to know more and you want to support it, uh, the environment. So a lot of the time the environment doesn't have a voice. So yeah. we do have to try and, 
yeah, be aware of what's uh, going on and yeah. As we just heard from Dr. Todd, underwater noise is a major challenge and really is a hidden threat. By monitoring and minimizing the acoustic impact of our construction activities in coastal areas, such as the installation of wind farms or buoys, we can really play a part in living in harmony with our oceans. So, what can we do about it? Turns out, a lot. Explore VR experiences that stimulate the underwater world and the impact of noise pollution. Share these experiences with friends and family, or even organize a VR event at your school. Experiencing the ocean soundscapes firsthand can be a powerful way to raise awareness. If you're artistically inclined, Create art that represents the effects of noise pollution on marine life. Organize an art exhibition or online gallery where the proceeds go to organizations working to combat ocean noise pollution. Or if you're tech savvy, consider developing or collaborating on an app that educates users about ocean noise pollution. The app could include interactive features like sound visuals, quizzes, or tips on how to reduce personal contributions to noise pollution. You could even organize a hackathon that brings together coders, designers, and environmentalists to develop innovative solutions for monitoring, reducing, or raising awareness about ocean noise pollution. Now, let's talk tech. There are some seriously cool innovations on the horizon that could help turn down the volume in our oceans. Air lubrication systems. These systems create a layer of bubbles under the ship's hull, reducing friction and noise. It's like adding a silencer to a car engine, less noise and less disturbance to marine life. Propeller air ingestion and emission. This tech feeds air through the propeller shaft and blades, reducing the noise produced by cavitation. It's still a little bit pricey, but if more ships adopt it, we could see a big drop in underwater noise. AI sound modeling. Here's where it gets a little bit futuristic. Researchers are using AI to model how sound waves travel underwater. This could help industries make better decisions about their impact on marine life, leading to smarter policies and quieter oceans. So, there you have it. The hidden threat of ocean noise pollution. Laid out and ready for action. It might seem like a big problem, but with awareness, smarter choices and some cutting edge tech, we can make a real difference. Remember, the ocean's future isn't just in the hands of scientists and policymakers, it's in ours too. So let's keep learning, keep sharing, and keep pushing for a more harmonious ocean. Thanks for tuning into Harmonious Oceans. If you found this episode interesting, hit that like button, share with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into how we can protect our planet.